given the average prices of new and resale homes have widened to 58.5%, with this current price gap, chances are you as a home buyer today would choose to focus on looking at resale properties due to several factors like price and that you can move in almost immediately. However, is this really true? Hello everyone, my name is Melissa and welcome back to my channel. There is a common question which many of my clients would ask me. Which resale property should we go for in order to satisfy the need of their own stay? Cheaper and at the same time not compromise on potential capital appreciation over the next 3 years. Recently, I've met up with a client of mine aged 45 with a budget of $2.3 million. Let's do a cost breakdown of the total cost involved when you purchase a $2.3 million resale private property. Assuming with a 75% loan of $1.725 million, with a 20-year loan tenure with a 3% interest rate, your monthly instalment would work out to be about $9,567 per month. This monthly repayment is then broken down to $5,254 going towards the repayment of the principal and $4,313 would be repaying the interest. We would only be taking the interest portion as an actual cost as the principal amount that is paid down towards the house will be returned to you upon selling the property. Taking into consideration other costs like your management fee of about $400 a month. Additionally, areas with high usage like kitchens and toilets would definitely require some renovation and touch-up. Let's use an estimate of $50,000 for this. Your total cost paid to this resale property over 3 years horizon will approximately be $220,000. However, is this cost really cheaper than buying a new launch property today? Let's also do a side-by-side -side comparison on the cost involved over the same period of 3 years should you decide to rent and purchase a $2.3 million new launch property. Before I share with you more, I would like to ask that you like and subscribe to my channel so that my content will be able to reach to more people like yourself. For new launches, due to the fact that it's still constructing, the monthly mortgage will be staggered. The developer has broken down the payments into a total of 8 stages and will only call upon the loan disbursement after they have completed each stage. This translates to a lower initial monthly mortgage for about $700 for the beginning and subsequently about $4,900 before achieving its TOP. As new launches typically take about 3 years to build, we'll be using the 3 years average monthly mortgage which works out to be $3,020 per month. And $1,358 will go towards the principal and $1,661 will go towards the interest. Similar to resale portion, we will multiply the interest payable over the next 36 months. So the total interest payable over the course of 3 years will be about 60000 In this case, there will not be any maintenance fee involved as the property is not ready yet. However, if you do not have a place to stay, you would definitely need to include the cost of renting and as per my last video, I spoke about renting strategically. Let's take a monthly rental about $4,000 for the next 36 months and you'll add up to about $144,000. So in total, the cost of owning a new property comes up to about $204,000 over the next 3 years. Doing a side-by-side -side cost comparison, the cost of owning either property is actually very similar. Buying a new launch and renting would actually cost $16,000 cheaper than buying a resale. This amount can however vary more if any of the costs like renovation changes. However, cost is only one portion to consider when buying a property. Another component that is often overlooked is the risk involved in buying a property. My client was considering to purchase a 1033 square feet resale property, Commonwealth Towers, completed in 2017, which is located next to Queenstown MRT. Whereas if he were to purchase a new launch, he could only consider something that is in a less ideal location and not next to the MRT. So let's just say my client bought this unit in May 2024 for 2.35 million, which translates his entry price to be about 2274 PSF. As the resale prices of properties are highly dependent on market conditions as well as supply and demand, there is a risk involved. So what do I mean by risk? We must always remember and take into consideration that there will be owners in Kamala Flowers who bought their units at launch in May 2014 with the average price of 1618 PSF. 
Today, they are experiencing a profit of about 36% and sitting on profits about $675,000. When you buy a property during launch, most of the buyers will be entering at around the same price. Upon TOP, this is where the price would see an increase, as some buyers will not mind to pay a premium for property that is new but ready to move in. As the demand increases, it will naturally beef up the prices and the volume of transactions as all owners will want to sell higher than the last transaction. The older the development, the wider the price gap will be from launch. And hence, this will pose as a greater risk to you because all it takes is for just one seller who do not mind selling their unit at a price that is lower than what you bought for, you will be stuck and it will take more time and volume of transactions to increase the prices again. I'm sure that all of us, if given a choice, we would genuinely like to avoid a situation where we are stuck with a property and find it challenging to move on, especially if we enter at a peak price today. Understanding both the cost and risk involved in purchasing a property is crucial as it will definitely help you make a more informed decision. Do reach out to me if you are a buyer today looking for the safest option in the market today. And for those of you who still would like to go for a resale property, I will be touching on how to select a resale property in my next video. Once again, my name is Melissa and I'll see you in the next one.